This race is going down in history as like the biggest banger of all mother flipping time. <laughs> Welcome to my most enjoyable race of all time. We find ourselves behind Jeff, who's behind Joey with a 206.8, Joey with a 206.3, and that is him in the alt pole racing livery, looking absolutely fantastic up there. We find ourselves on the outside for the first corner, not my favorite place to be in the world, and it looks like car number 13 is gonna go side by side with us. We uh, actually get a little bit of net code there. I know everybody, oh, so much net code in this game, yeah. It, it's all over the place. Uh, it bumps us wide, and then he has the good fortune of having car number four behind him who's going to push him down the straight with a bump draft, but then he immediately moves in front of me to defend this first corner from car number four, and I'm going to be able to take advantage of that and move up the inside. Car number four goes a bit wide around that corner. Very, very easy to uh, see yourself falling a lot wider than you would like to as the outside car coming into that corner, which is corner two, I believe, will... We will be referencing referencing that one quite a bit today. Up the mountain for the first time in the race, right on the tail of 13, and I'm actually gonna back off of him a little bit here. I want him to feel secure. I want him to uh, not worry about his lines. If he were to hit a wall, I will most likely end up hitting him, especially if I'm that close. Um, and he has a higher likelihood of hitting the wall if I'm right up on his bumper. I actually break a little bit there, which you do not need to when driving at pace, but I do want to give this guy some room, especially going down the mountain uh, right here for the first time. And uh, it's pretty easy to catch up down the mountain, a lot easier to catch up uh, than it is to recover from an accident. So I'm, I'm much more worried about just staying on the track. I've been in quite a few accidents this week at Mount Panorama, as you can probably imagine. Coming onto the back straight for the first time, super important straight, and the exit from that previous corner is just as important, if not more important, as it does dictate your speed down the straight. We are close enough that we're soaking up slipstream from this guy. You can see the top three cars up there starting to pull away a bit. On the exit of this corner, you see we get some oversteer there, and that's going to open up a gap ahead of us and uh, let the car behind us get a really good run into the final corner he is on the outside extremely hard to make a move on the outside you're really looking for a move into turn one which is what he's going to do here up onto the inside of turn one and that's kind of like a it's kind of like the classic switch back on this track you'll see that happen quite a lot uh, throughout the race I don't even think we make contact there. We just kind of back off and give him that corner. It is possible to hold the outside around turn one, but I figured, you know, I could tuck behind him and push him down the straight, and this way we could both catch that big group ahead, and uh, hopefully I could uh, see some fighting go down and gain some positions that way. Breaking really early into turn two, about 50 meters too early there. You can see how large the gap is. That was not intentional. I just completely missed my braking marker. Uh, better too early than too late, though, I suppose. Coming through the mountain for the second time, or down the mountain for the second time, and as we come through the chicane, car number 13 is going to completely cut it. Uh, really well handled by him, though. I have to give it to him, because as we come to finish off the mountain, he's going to pull over to the right to serve the penalty he got from cutting that chicane and give both me and uh, car number four a uh, way through without losing any time at all. Love to see that. That is some fantastic decision making. Everybody continues to move forward at that point. I, I've seen a lot of people just slow down over slowing corners and it causes huge accidents. We begin to fall off of car number four at the end of that straight. As we have mentioned, we're not the best at gaining speed onto that straight. These guys right here, all five of us, all the way from car two at the front to me at the back are going to basically be the main characters of this race and by virtue of this video. So car number two at the front, he's currently sitting in P4. And uh, so that's kind of, this whole group is fighting for P4 at the moment. And everybody will start to condense as that car number two at the front was, he was, he was a very quick driver, but he was well aware that there were three guys lined up behind him. So he was making damn sure that he gave no opportunity for anybody to pass him. Car number four getting a really good run on Joey onto the back straight. It's not quite going to be enough. Joey does well there to hold the inside of this corner, which is really what you want to do. If you hold the right side on that straight, they're just going to go around what seems like the outside, but then you hit that left hander and you realize that you are now on the outside. Um, if that makes any sense, lots of sides going on. Look how close everybody is. I mean, it's probably a second and a half, maybe two seconds from P4 to me, and then there's this large gap behind me, which is a great, great situation for me. It allows me to 
kind of watch this group ahead, see what people are doing, how they're behaving, how they're fighting, if they want to make a move, how ready they are to make a move. And uh, at the same time, I'm not being put under pressure from behind. Uh, card number two, quite the opposite situation for him as he is holding back the flood behind him. If he makes one mistake, there's possibly four cars going to gain that position with me being the last one to gain that position. Um, very real possibility at any point on this track. You make one mistake on the mountain and you lose so much time. Uh, it's honestly, you either lose a lot of time or you end up wrecking and in that case all of us would probably die. Another benefit to being the rear car is I can stay just far enough back so that if an accident does go down, I'm able to react with much more time uh, than any of the cars ahead of me as they're all just about bumper to bumper for a lot of this race. Car number what is that joey up ahead it looks like he is putting some uh, good time onto jeff who is currently sitting in p5 right ahead of him it's really going to come down to once again exiting out of the out of the mountain and onto the straight and let's see how he does a wide entry cutting right onto the apex jeff still manages to really hook his car in that apex very well even while taking a pretty narrow entry and that's something i've kind of learned about this track you don't necessarily need to have the widest entry for that corner it's more about how close you can get and uh, how tight you can get that apex to pull you around. Looks like Jeff may put a move on the leader, but he's going, or I'm sorry, he's not the leader. He's a P4, but the leader of our group. And the leader does very well there to defend that. He takes a semi-defensive line and then pulls back over to the right side after he realizes it's too late for anybody to make a move on him. Joey getting very close to uh, P4 and P5, looking to maybe make a move onto the first corner. Uh, from this angle, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Everybody's, I'd say, two tenths, three tenths apart with me probably hanging uh, about half a second off of the group at the back end of it. And... We are all just traveling in this beautiful little train, everybody soaking up slipstream from each other, which we desperately need as the slight defending that is happening from car number two at the front is kind of driving our lap times down. Uh, nobody behind us is really catching though, as there are some other battles going on, slowing them down. So nobody's really hot lapping anywhere here towards the front, perhaps uh, except for the leaders who are at this point probably six seconds up the road. They are absolutely gunning it. And one of them has wrecked at this point. So, that has promoted all of us into one position higher. Car number two leading this group is now sitting in a podium position. And once we realized that, I think that's what kind of ignites a bit more fighting when everybody realizes that there's actually a chance for the podium should you find yourself at the front of this group. Car number four getting a really good run and you can see him taking a narrow line as he comes out of that final corner. Joey goes a bit wide on the exit and that's going to place car number four on his left side which is the inside for the next next corner which is the important one. Car two pulls over onto the racing line and that is crucially going to give number four the slipstream uh, as Joey had it at the beginning of the straight but for now attains it gaining a lot of speed and there's not much Joey can really do there. You're kind of asking for trouble when you go too wide there and the outside car is usually the one who is on the uh, shit end of that stick getting pushed wide so joey backs out very smart decision and now we have two pole racing cars side by or not side by side but one after the other at the back of this group which is kind of at the front which uh, i felt really good about it was cool to just kind of see this and be in a race with somebody who i would consider to be a teammate at this point and um, see what we could do perhaps work together but uh, nothing egregious, of course. We are still at the back of this pack. We still have a good amount of time to the car behind us, so no pressure there. Joey perhaps looking to make a move into corner two, backing off before he gets there. Wasn't quite close enough. Would have been a little bit of a dive bomb and potentially brought himself, uh, the car ahead of him, and me. I would have had to slow down as well. Might have detached us from the two cars ahead and... We were all eyeballing. Every single one of us was eyeballing P3, even me from the back of this group. I'm just waiting for my opportunity to strike. It may look like I'm kind of uh, struggling to keep up, but a lot of it was kind of saving my tires, knowing that I can go faster, but also knowing that I could use this position to my advantage. Car number four has a fantastic run onto the straight and is putting Jeff under a ton of pressure. Who's putting car number two under pressure? Jeff cuts back to the racing line and car number four does absolutely fantastically up the inside. He's going to try and hold this one through side by side. Jeff backs off a little bit. Car four gets some oversteer. That's going to slow him down and by virtue slow Joey down and by virtue slow us down. I think that's I think that makes sense by virtue. I'm not quite sure how that term works, but it sounds right. Joey and car number four side by side. Joey knows that that is a uh, 
it's not a good place for him to be so he backs off we settle behind him and the group continues to kind of condense together of course car number two at the front is putting a little bit of time between himself and jeff but i have so much faith in jeff i have so much faith in jeff who is currently sitting in p4 the guy behind car number two he is an extremely fast driver and more than that i find him to be a very capable smart and safe driver which often yields him better results than somebody who's faster than him uh, but nonetheless i still do see him as an extremely fast driver joey is putting car number four under a ton of pressure as we head down the hill it looks like he kind of eases off as we finally hit the uh, long long braking zone through those chicanes very interesting uh, series of corners right there probably my favorite ever of any track we are going to get pretty close to joey here back off a little bit and he gets a very very good run out of there that was one of our better runs as well through that that uh, final corner we are not super comfortable there you can see the gap up until p3 is growing car number four perhaps looking to push jeff towards him is uh what i was thinking was going to happen here but he's going to send it right up the inside and uh, this time he's going to make it stick so jeff is behind him joey behind jeff i'm doing a 50 50 grind on the curb into the final corner joey perhaps looking up the inside of jeff it looks like he is jeff allows plenty of space there takes a very clean line for being the outside car there does uh kind of get botched back onto the track and make contact with joey however it's not really going to slow him down too much he's going to go side by side with me and i don't want an outside line here i'm going to tuck behind him and try and work together with him a little bit push him down the straight and uh, make sure we don't lose any sort of attachment to these cars ahead feel pretty comfortable with this as I, I think um, Joey and me have a, a very cordial relationship. I wasn't going to send anything crazy up here and actually back off ahead of time just to make sure he knows that before we get into the braking zone so he doesn't feel like he's going to have to defend through there. And up the mountain we go as we make our way down the mountain just a few corners later the group is basically all back together. Well, I, okay, they're still spread out but we all have the slipstream of each other and um, on this track if you can manage to keep that slipstream to the car ahead by the time you reach the straight I mean you're going to be chilling. It's really all about maintaining that gap down the mountain. If you can keep that gap the same then you'll be chilling once you reach the straight. That's what I'm trying to say here. This is a couple of laps later, skipping ahead. The whole situation is very similar. Nobody has switched positions. We are just kind of going down, running through the laps together. Jeff locking up a bit there, but making the line work for him somehow. And uh, we're gonna make contact with the wall twice. Really let Jeff, or let uh, Joey know, excuse me, that we don't wanna put pressure on him. He is getting pretty damn close to Jeff and Joey and Jeff have kind of gone back and forth quite a lot over the last week. So I was really excited to watch that battle. Uh, car number four, losing the slip to the car ahead just briefly as he manages to kind of swerve back and forth and try and break the toe. And coming into the corner, he's not gonna be close enough, so he's gonna back off there. Meanwhile, Joey looking up the inside of Jeff. Is he? He absolutely is. Breaking super late. Jeff, amazing driver. Good uh, decision making there to settle behind and uh, not go out wide because had he done that, he probably would have ended in the dirt. Joey is defending into the final corner. Car number four up ahead of him is looking to get a switch back on the podium sitter. Doesn't quite look like he got the speed out of there. It almost looks like he fell back. He did indeed. So Joey now finds himself on the outside of car number four, which is the outside for turn one, a horrible place to be. And sure enough, he's going to uh, kind of get nudged wide there. Jeff takes an inside line, but we are going to slide ourselves right behind Joey and push him hopefully past Jeff. Maybe we could tab tag along. We do have the inside and on corner two, the inside is extremely advantageous. Let's see what the situation is gonna be here. Just barely find the space. Jeff begins to turn in there, but uh, it's very hard to hold the tight line through there as the outside car, and he's going to end up slotting behind us. So we have moved Jeff to the back of the pack, both Joey and myself moving up very slowly. And uh, he's now putting a ton of pressure up ahead onto car number four. And the these all three of these cars ahead are probably within, I don't know, half of a second, maybe less of each other. They are just about bumper to bumper. I really want to make sure that I am close enough to these guys that I do not lose the toe. I do have Jeff behind me and I trust him to push me down that straight. But if he wanted to go for a move, there would really be nothing I could do unless I was attached to these cars ahead. So sending it down the mountain, trying to get as close as I can safely to these guys. And man, they are feeling pretty fast at this point. Somebody makes contact with the wall there. It doesn't really do too much to your pace, hurt you too much. And um, I'd say we're sufficiently in the toe at this point. Look how close these guys are. We do run into the wall, but Jeff behind us, um, he has to kind of slow down to avoid going into the wall. He was probably 
fixating on us a little bit. Heading down the straight for the penultimate time, we are about to start the final lap, and car number four is looking to battle for P3. Pause, because uh, I have a proposition for you. Real quick, I'll be quick. If I can make this octopus into that bucket on the car, I'm gonna be standing over there, then you have to subscribe. So heading down the straight for the second to last time, it looks like car number four is going to claim P3, but then shit goes fucking wild. Car number four up ahead takes way too much of this curve, goes into the dirt, locks up his tires as he rejoins, slides directly off the track, giving uh, myself and Joey up one position. I slow down just to be cautious there, and it allows Jeff to creep up behind me and place his car on the outside, heading into the final corner. Joey on the outside of car number two up ahead of us. We're going to take a tight line here, and Jeff is going to stay wide, cut behind us, look for a move underneath us. We almost take a defensive line, but realize he's going over there. He then tucks back to the outside, and coming into the braking zone, just before it he's gonna move back to the inside and this took a lot of faith in Jeff I knew he I felt like he wasn't gonna make that I mean honestly I knew he wasn't going to actually make that move but it was very very close and I decided to full send it there uh, thank God I did now up ahead through that corner Joey makes contact with car number two which pushes him wide which pushes puts us on Joey's ass and car number two knows that so he's gonna move to the racing line and he wants us now to go up the inside of Joey I don't want to but if I don't do it Jeff is gonna do it to me so I have to do it before Jeff and it was close he moved right after I moved had uh, I not moved in time he probably would have been up the inside of myself and Joey he's going to launch me up the inside of Joey as he gives us a bump draft and then he backs off so we take that position from Joey and he settles behind him we have a bit of a gap to the car ahead and this is the final lap so we are running out of time if we want to claim a podium position trying our best to hustle this car up the hill taking these lines as close to the wall and leaving our foot on the power as much as we dare up this little section right there you have to very slightly lift or you don't have to lift but i tend to right right there you do as well taking that curb and it doesn't look like we're making much progress on this guy meanwhile joey behind us very close he ends up sending it wide into the dirt saves it just barely before getting back on track for the downhill chicane jeff is going to be right on his tail and as we come through the chicane for the final time we are all within i'd say under a second of each other something must have happened to the car ahead as he has slowed down a lot completely misses the apex onto the straight for the final time which is going to put us heavily heavily in his slipstream he has no slipstream ahead we had a better run onto the straight we should be able to catch this guy everybody is soaking up each other's slipstreams we're all moving to the racing line so if anybody wanted to send a move it's totally possible we're going to cut, cut across here it doesn't look like we're going to be close enough to make a move he does still take a semi-defensive line that's going to slow him down even more and sure enough it does we are right on his tail only one corner left and I could just stay behind him and accept P4, or I could go for it. I'm going to end up going for it. I know he's going to slow down a lot. He wants to take a super defensive line. As we get on the power, we built it up too quickly, slide out. Joey hits us, gets past, and we managed to catch the car and cross the line, but my God, was it close. I'll show you a couple of different angles. Everybody crossing the line at almost the same time. We slide out. Joey gets through. Jeff and me cross the line at, I'm not sure, um, it looked like the same time. I mean, look at this. What? That's, that's, it's so, it's so freaking close an insane finish to this race and a finish that it honestly deserved so much and I'm glad that it got checking the results we ended up behind Jeff we, we barely ended up behind Jeff except for car number two there we all finished within less than three tenths of each other about a quarter of a second I think slightly less than a quarter of a second between four cars me and Jeff we were 1,000th off on our average lap time, and he beat me by 0 .009 uh, of a second, which is, what, 9,000th of a second. If you enjoyed this video, I am sure you will enjoy my other ones. Please check out my channel, um, and thank you so much for watching.